Hello friends, Tom Downey here for the Packers preseason profile. We'll start things off with, with some of their additions. It was very much an unusual Packers offseason based on recent history. They brought in two big name guys, one on offense, one on defense. Jimmy Graham comes over from Seattle to provide a big name at tight end and a big red zone threat there as well. Muhammad Wilkerson kind of got lazy after that first contract with the Jets, but a one-year prove-it deal could be exactly what he needs. Sherman Williams comes over as well. And then in the draft, I love what Green Bay did. I'm a big fan of volume. Green Bay traded down, got a future first round pick, added a bunch of corners in Jair Alexander and Josh Jackson, amongst some other defensive players. I love EQ St. Brown in particular. All in all, one heck of an offseason for the Green Bay Packers in terms of additions. In terms of losses, well, there were a few. Morgan Burnett leaves, but Green Bay is okay at safety without him. Yes, they lost Jordy Nelson, but I still maintain that Nelson is not the same player he once was, unfortunately. Demarius Randall was traded in part of a deal to land Deshaun Kaiser, and they didn't really need Randall, especially once they added Josh Jackson and Kevin King. Last year, Josh Jackson and Jay Alexander this year. All in all, it's a pretty easy offseason grade of an A for me for the Packers. It's not their usual MO, a new regime, a new ish regime. They, they, they uh, promoted some guys from within, but they were aggressive and they upgraded the roster in a way that I found very impressive. All in all, Green Bay, I like what they did after a very unusually down season in 2017. Pre-season time here and Packers play four games. They start with the Tennessee Titans, then play the Pittsburgh Steelers and hey, maybe, just maybe it could be a Super Bowl preview. People are talking. Oakland Raiders in week three and on the road and then at the Chiefs as well. And we'll focus on that week three dress rehearsal game. I don't know how much we'll actually see of Aaron Rodgers, but I think we'll see plenty of the halfbacks, and that's a big training camp battle to monitor. And I'm sure we'll see plenty of these young corners as the Packers have continued to try, hopefully successfully this time, revamp their secondary with a bunch of new defensive backs. On to some training camp storylines. Let me just kind of mention the first one there. Who emerges as the lead back for Green Bay? That's a big question mark. Now, Aaron Jones suspended for four games. He had not been suspended, might have been the front runner, but for at least for the first four games of the year, he's not going to be a factor. That leaves a two-headed attack of Jamal Williams and Ty Montgomery. I'll put Jamal at the front right now. Don't read that much into it. It's going to be a committee no matter what, but maybe Jamal gets the first, second down and some goal line work, and then Ty Montgomery, who we know, obviously, is a good pass catcher, can help more on third downs. Either way, I think it's going to be a committee approach. I remain a big fan of Jamal Williams. I've liked him coming out of BYU. He would have my vote there, but of those three guys, Jamal, Ty Montgomery, and Aaron Jones, I don't think there's a bad one, a bad option among them. Back to the secondary now, and I'm very curious to see how this group looks, especially at the cornerback spot. Now, I feel fine about Josh Jones and Ha-Ha Clinton Dix at safety if Clinton Dix gets head back after a very bad week 17. But Kevin King is the guy the Packers hope is a starter. I feel the most confident about Tremont Williams because he's the most experienced. And then it's more young guys. Jair Alexander, who I like a lot. Josh Jackson, who I really like coming out of Iowa. Devon House is there. Hawkins, Goodson as well. Maybe Quentin Rollins is on the trade block given his injury history. And the reality is that there's depth at this Packers cornerback spot, even if it's not exactly proven depth. But the Packers, if they want to make a deeper run with their new scheme under new DC Mike Pettin, they have to get better play from the cornerback spot. Bring in three new guys in Sherman, Jair, and Josh Jackson. They need those guys and Kevin King as well to step up in a big, big way this season. One more, not necessarily lesser storyline, but one that will continue to be brought up, I'm sure, until it actually happens. When does Aaron Rodgers get his new contract? It's gonna happen. Both sides want it to get done, but no sides, but both sides are really not in any urgent rush because there's plenty of time there. Either way, the Packers, as we saw last year, are a disaster without Aaron Rodgers. Now, partial was because Brett Hundley's pretty bad too, but there was a steep drop off, not just a quarterback, but across the board for the Packers without Rodgers. And his new deal, once it happens, and I say once because there's no ifs about it, it's gonna happen at some point, it will be a record setting deal. The question is, is it a two year deal? Is it a three year deal? Is it a percentage of the cap deal each season? How does it go in? Either way, expected to be a record setting deal and Rodgers already kind of hinted at that yeah, I'm okay with it being a, a different type of deal. So it's not a, a panic level training camp storyline, but it's definitely one to continue to monitor all season and all offseason long. As to the Packers' schedule this year, it's an interesting slate. 
Green Bay, or the Green Bay play Chicago in week one on Sunday Night Football. Then it's Minnesota, so back-to-back -back NFC North matchups. And then two, I would say, easier games at Washington, home against the Buffalo Bills, who don't look all that good this year. Detroit is week five on the road. Monday Night Football, week six against the Niners. Then it's a bye. Then they go play the Rams. So a tough back-to-back -to -back game slate there with San Francisco and then on the road to L.A., but at least you get a bye. But it continues in week nine, Sunday Night Football on the road against the Patriots. So a rough couple of three games there from week six to week nine. Then a bit of a breather, the Dolphins. They shouldn't be all that good. Short week, though, Seattle, week 11, Thursday Night Football. That's going to be a fun game to watch. On the road against Minnesota, a potential breather against Arizona before you go back and you play at home against the Falcons. End the year with the Bears, the Jets, and the Lions. Two of those games on the road. Not the hardest schedule ever, a beneficiary of, play, of only going 7-9 last year, but not exactly a coasting schedule either. As for their odds this year, plus 1,400. Not that bad for Green Bay, one of the favorites. Not a top five team, but not that far behind it. I've got them finishing second in the NFC North. If you Packers fans want to think they're going to finish first, I'm not going to argue that much with you. I just think Minnesota's a better team, but... I do think Green Bay will make it to the playoffs this year. And as long as Aaron Rodgers is healthy, this team is a Super Bowl favorite, or at the very least, a Super Bowl threat. So let me know where you think the Packers will finish this year in the NFC North. I got them finishing second with a wild card berth at 11 or 10 wins. They're going to be one of the top 10 teams in the NFL this year, but in a tough NFC North that might result in a second place finish for Green Bay. Hit us up on Facebook at facebook.com slash chatsports for more NFL coverage, including highlights, all season long.